this week on The Core. Today we'll be spending the day with one of Accra's local painters. By seeing the world through his eyes, we'll be able to understand the importance that art plays in Ghanaian society and the role that Ghanaian society plays in art. I'm quite excited actually. Can I paint now? That is the question, right? Can I paint? I'm not sure guys. Today we're going to be spend spending the day with Romeo. Let's go and find him. Hi. Hello. Hello Emily. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Too? I'm good. I'm good. Oh, okay, you're so welcome. thank you for yeah letting me come and spend the day with you in your studio. Great, great, great. great. You're welcome. So this, this is this yeah. my studio, and then uh, it's called KNK Art Studio. Mm -hmm. I'm the director and then the lead artist as well. So everything there is not only for me. There are some things for other people. Okay. And then I'm the lead artist, like I told you. So. Yes, so you're welcome. Okay, so what here is yours? Yeah, everything here is mine, everything there is mine. These okay. are charcoal pieces. Um, it's charcoal, like a raw charcoal. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I pick them around, trying to use them for something, and this is what I get in trying to, you know, the That's charcoal cool. here, so, so this is eight, and then the, these are installations, and um, mm -hmm. yeah. How long have you been doing it for? Yeah, I've been working for 15 years, practicing, wow. yeah. I started okay. practicing art from a very tender age. So, yeah, this time I've never, not really practiced it in school. I studied mm -hmm. visual arts in school, but then I was practicing already before I got there in marketing, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so. Okay, so you studied it as well, right? Yeah. Well, you studied like a visual art. Yeah, like Were your visual. parents happy for you to study a creative mm, subject? Not really, but then I forced them to accept it. How, how did you get through that? Like, how did you get them to, to be on your boat? Yeah, I was going for competitions for my school when it comes to art programs, and I make sure I win. So whenever they come to the school, teachers will be telling them, come on, your son is good in art, let him practice art fully and all that. So they were a bit relaxed until I started painting and telling, and then they go to know, wow, this guy can make a living out of this, so let's allow him. Ooh. So did you open the studio here yourself? Yeah, I opened the studio here That's myself. That's impressive, yeah, 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 amazing. Yeah, yeah. So you opened it for other artists to come to in come here, in here and, and, then, and practice. Yeah, practice. Yes, 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 sure. Especially wow. on vacation, so I have about 17 students coming to this place to practice art. So like school is reopening and I have some permanent ones with me, they are with me. Anytime after school they come here and they practice. This then, is so impressive yeah. that you've just yes. built this from the ground up. Yes, yes, and yes, you've yes, yes, that yes. you've used your passion to, to yeah. 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 So so okay, so very quickly before we go and get into the actual making, what do you do on your day to day? I paint. Every day every you day paint? I paint? Every day I paint. What, what I do is I walk into this place every morning from the house to this place and then whatever I'm inspired to do, I do. But I paint every day. I may be inspired to do installations today or work with a charcoal. But no matter what I do, I make sure I paint. So I feel like this is probably going to be more my style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it's a piece right. of art, but I mean... Yeah. You don't know what I've done, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, and yeah. we're using paints? Yeah, we're using paints, acrylic, okay. and then we have the palette knife, we have brushes around, so... Right, okay, let's go. Use. Romeo had the paints out all ready for us to start painting. Okay, can I ask you why it's not white? Yeah, because... Uh, the, the canvas itself is red, and then uh, I prime it with off white. Oh. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So is this cloth, this right? This cloth, yeah. So the canvas yeah. itself is red, and. Okay. Then, so we're having like a pink base. Yeah. I like pink, so it's good, oh, okay, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 I was scared to start. To something. <laughs> 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 okay. 
I feel like I've just ruined the thing. Okay, you're like, come on. Okay, yeah, right. Yeah. Continue. Should we like paint with passion? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, it's always nice. It's always the energy nice. is there, no? Why not? I, I feel like I'm being a bit safe, right? I'm staying with the white. Yeah. So if I leave, should I put the paint brushes in each colour? Yeah. So red. No more holding back. Time to go for it. How do you make purple? Um, blue, blue and red? And red, yeah. Blue and red. <laughs> Ta -ta I remember that. <laughs> what do you think in regards to art in Ghana? Do you feel that people take it seriously or do you think there's still this stigma that it's not a profession? Yeah, for now it's changing. It's changing. People are now beginning to uh, realize art and then to appreciate art in Ghana now, it's, it's changing. Mm -hmm. Formerly, like you said, you know, people don't really respect art and artists because they don't really understand what it means or yeah. its role in the environment. So they kind of reserve it. If they find you as an artist, they think, come on, this guy is wasting his time and oh. all that. But then it's changing, it's changing. So well, yeah. like you said you were working with kids. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm working with kids. How many come here? About 17 of them. So cool. I feel like I'm gonna become, it's a bit elementary, okay. but I'm just doing shapes. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, you say it's so serious, like, yeah, I can see you're doing shapes, like, this This means something deep. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, mean, well, I just don't have a clue what to do. You know what it looks like? A Christmas tree with presents on the bottom. Yeah, I can see that. And one thing I'm, I'm, I'm seeing in your pieces, Every good art piece is uh, made up of uh, texture, lines, and shapes, and you've got it all. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can become a good artist if you continue practicing. <laughs> <laughs> You're very encouraging. Yeah. I love it. What do you think is the importance of art in society? Art education, love. Art help promote our culture. Artists are inspired by what you see around them. Mm, I can hear some tapping in the background. Mm -hmm. They make arts here as well, right? Say again? They make um, bowls as well, right? Yeah, 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 they make bowls. What they do is uh, they polish them here, they get them from somewhere, they bring them down here, polish them, design them, and then sell it here. At first I thought it was like um, a Christmas tree. Yeah. And it kind of looked like a bad dream. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not really too sure what it is. Regardless, here was our final. Not too sure what it was inspired by, but Romeo seemed to be intrigued. Cool! So I've signed it. Yeah. So this is like the expensive signatures on there. Mm-hmm. We have to try oh. and sell this? Yeah, sure. We think $500 should be our starting price. Yeah. Can we sell it wet? Yeah, sure. It's I love it. You just say yes, yeah, sure to everything. <laughs> yes, yeah, sure. Let's ruin people's yeah. cars. <laughs> no. Yeah. Like they might want to buy game. Because it's wet. It's wet. Yeah, and we can also just see somebody that say they would have paid. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, we had to give it a try. Okay. Hey. So this is the beach, right? Yeah, this is the beach. This is the beach, so after painting in there, we come out here to display them. And we do this mostly on weekends, Saturdays, Sundays and holidays. And then uh, if you are favored, you know, we get people coming in here, walking into the whole show and buying everything. So we have to try and sell my piece, right? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. sure. Let me go and ask this horse. Okay. It's very heavy. Yeah. I just said yes! But he said he wants my art piece. Oh, wait. Oh, I think that's a no. Okay, fine. I made this. 
Are you interested to buy? You like? You want to buy it? You want to buy it? That was easy, wasn't it? $500! You'll think about it. Okay. Next victim. Hi. I made this art piece. I'm selling. No. no. My blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> and here's our third victim. Sorry, I mean customer. So the the bird is here who met the mouse, and then the two hands said stop. Hi, ladies. I made this painting. Would you like to buy it? Maybe in your living room? Yeah, I don't think they liked it at all. Hi guys, maybe they want to buy. Do you guys want to buy my art? They're in another country. <laughs> oh, for you, do you feel that you make enough money from art? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, make, I make real good money. I make real good money from art from here for now. For now, whatever I'm handing there, it's okay for me. It's, it's, it's. What's the competition like? Yeah, for on the beach here, yeah, there are a lot of people selling art as well, but for me, I think I stand out due to what I exhibit here. It's quite beyond the, le the level of art they already exhibiting here. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, some of the sellers here come run to me and they're like, I've shown somebody all my artworks and they, they don't like any of them, so come on, come and show them what you have. So yeah. I bring them on and then that's it. So for me, my biggest challenge before was a place to sell my artwork mm -hmm. until I'm able to raise money to pay for the studio here on the beach. Mm -hmm. And then I think that problem is solved. I have people coming anytime, making new contacts each and every day. And then I have people exporting works to them, you know, outside Ghana and everything. So for me, I think art is really good for me. That's amazing. Here. Well, I'm glad it's working for you. Yeah. I see for me it's not working so well. <laughs> so yeah, that was absolutely amazing. And thank you, Romeo, for letting me spend the day with you and understanding what it's like to be a painter in Accra. And as you can see, I didn't find it that easy. The painting was great, but the selling, not as good. So next week, we're going to have another day in the life. And stay tuned to find out what will be coming up. After the break, join us for WX6 and Talent on the Streets. This week on WX6, we go into the streets of Accra to find out Which are the best places to find art in Accra? Art is all around in Accra. From festivals, galleries and even war memorials, art is everywhere. Here are some galleries based in Accra. The Artist Alliance Gallery, founded by respected Ghanaian artist Ablede Glover, holds three floors of paintings, carvings, photography and a lot more. Gallery 1957, based in one of Ghana's high-end hotels, represents Ghanaian artists in international fairs. The Newburgh Foundation is a space dedicated to the promotion of Ghanaian visual art, culture and heritage. The Eno Institute of Contemporary Arts, which opened earlier in the year, has been involved in numerous collaborations, publications, films, exhibitions and events nationally and internationally. And of course, the Art Centre is the place if you're looking for more indigenous art. So here's a clue of our talent on the street. Oh. Hi, Emmeline. Hi, Kenneth. Nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. I'm really excited about this actually because I've never owned a dog. Okay. And I've always really been intrigued about dog training. Whoa. And what goes into it. Oh. So I have lots of questions for you. No problem, I'm ready to answer them. Amazing. Yeah. So, okay, so how long have you been doing dog training for? I've been training dogs for like 15 years now. Wow. Well, how did you get into it? Well, I got into dog training from my grandmother's side. And she had a dog. So 
Once a while, when she's going to the farm, the dog goes with her to the farm. Sometimes she don't want the dog to go with her to the farm. So she tells the dog, look, don't come with me to the farm today. And then the dog turns around and takes a different route. And before she gets to the farm, the dog is already there. And she goes like, oh, but I told you not to come and you are here. Okay, you won't get food. Then when it is like lunch time and she goes back to have her lunch and the dog is looking at her and says, if you don't lay down, you won't get any food. And then the dog will lay down and then she finishes eating and she gives the rest to the dog. And I was like, wow, this is interesting because then it means they listen. They can actually do whatever you ask them to do. I joined my parents in Accra here and then I met this um, dog, Lava, and the trainer as well, George Anda, the Honorable George Anda anyway. Then I met him and then he said, look, he's looking for somebody who will take care of his dogs, who will assist him with his dog training and walking them and that stuff. And I said, look, I'm interested. From there, I, I had the passion for it. So I was doing it out of my heart, doing everything, following every instructions he gives me. From there, I realized that, look, I was doing good and I developed interest in training. So I started learning the training on my own in his house training the dogs and maybe when I have difficulties in some place I will ask him and then he say oh no you do it this way Kenneth you do it this way Kenneth so by so doing I realized that look this is it's something that I can develop into the future that would earn me some money and that will also give me the passion that I have for it. So dog training is all that you do now as your yep. main source of income? Yes. So I told myself, why don't I go and get myself formally educated in dog training? So I had to apply to a school in the U.S., a dog training school in the U.S. Then they admitted me, so I had to go do my dog training course in the U.S. Amazing. Day-to-day yeah. -day basis, yeah. what do you do? On a day-to-day -day basis, what I do is that when I wake up in the morning, I get my dogs, take them out for a walk come back, do a little training with them. Then after that, I go out there from client house to house, training their dogs for them. Mm, yes. okay. yeah. As a trainer, you need to make sure that the dog is in good health before you can actually train the dog. Mm. So I try to make sure that I bring quality goods or quality products, pet products that would assist, make sure that the dog are in good health. I do a lot of a couple of training here. These are my personal dogs. It's, I just mm -hmm. do it for fun, mm -hmm. but it could be for commercial purpose. I have one my dog that could actually sniff out weed. Wow! If if I had weed anywhere here, we call it sniffing dogs. That's the drug dogs. What I would do is I will give you the drug. You yeah. these are the training lab, mm -hmm. the, like the training lab. So we have the drawers there yeah. you can hide it in any of the drawer you can open not to put it in the drawer and put it anywhere around and the dog will look right he will alert you he when he gets there where the drug is he's gonna sit down and look at you and look at the place and like the drug is here yeah that's amazing okay i'm ready all right thank let's you let's go good yes so this is the weed okay yes. okay so i have to hide this right yes so, but how do we know that this dog isn't looking? What's the dog's name? Um, PJ's. PJ's? Yes. Okay, PJ. Girl or boy? A boy. A boy. Yeah. So how do I make sure that PJ isn't looking where I'm... So I'm going to take PJ's out of the house. Okay, cool. Then he will come and search. Oh my gosh, this is fun. Okay, so where should I hide it? Um, I don't know. Where should I hide it? Okay. Under this bin? Oh no, that's too easy. It needs to be hard. What about up a tree? You think up a tree is cool? Um, okay. Let's look, let's look. Um, I feel like if I hide it here, the dog will know straight away, right? Okay, I'm gonna hide it here, okay? I feel like the dog won't know. That's cool, right? So just here. Okay. So let's call him back in. I'm a bit nervous. I think it's okay. Shh. Oh. Did you know? 
Good. It's not me, PJ. Stop. Sit. Sit. PJ, sit. Stay. Good. Okay. Sit. Oh. First a little pee. Oh, quick hello to the pals first. Cold, cold, cold. Oh, warm, warmer, warmer, hot, hot. Oh, oh there she goes. PJ one, Emily zero. That's amazing. Good job. Okay, inside, inside. Good boy, stay. Spin. Spin. Good. Catch. Wow. Kenneth showed us more skills that he has taught his Belgian Shepherd, Coco. No. 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 Hop. And enter Coco. Wow. That's amazing. She's yes. come back. Do you think there's anything I can do with them? Yes, of course. I don't know if PJ seemed a bit more like listening or the time. Will she be okay? Yeah. Okay, let me try, okay? Okay. Her name is Coco. Coco Chanel, yep. Oh, Coco. Oh, I like her already. Okay, Coco, we're going to do some tricks, okay? Yes. No, Coco, hold it. Ew. Careful. No, okay. Come, sit. Coco, sit. 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 She doesn't want to listen to me, does she? Yeah, be firm on her. Sit. That's it. Good girl. I couldn't resist. I had to see if I could get Coco to respond to me. Stay. Walk. Come. Come. Call her. Call her. Coco, come. Go, go, go. Coco, through the legs. Through the legs. Through the legs. Okay, sit. Okay, come. Coco, sit. Stay. Okay, you step back and tell her down. Down. Coco, down. It seemed I was getting the hang of it. Coco, come. To my side, come. Coco, through the legs. And no, my legs Coco. not high enough. <clears throat> Wait, sit. Coco, through the legs. No, okay, so that way, then the treat go that way. The treat, come on, leg, Coco, here. Shh, leg. Okay, cool, okay. Um. Okay, getting between my legs was trickier than I thought. Leg. Cool. Come, leg. Leg. Move the tree that ah. way. Yes, that way. Leg, leg, leg. That's yes, it. good girl. Sit. Okay, sit, now you sit, sit, sit. Good. Okay. Stay. Stay. Okay, so now walk with her. Walk with her by your side, now like walk. that. Now walk. Go, call her. Coco, come. Good. good. Walk. Stay. Good. Sit. Coco, sit. Leg. Coco, sit. Sit. Coco, sit. Sit. Very good. Very good. Yeah. I, I managed to even get through the leg. I think I, that, that is an achievement for me. And it's hard because you have to be so firm. And I'm not normally someone who's like, sit. Yeah. Lay not down. Too, not too bossy. Heel. Heel. I survived. Heel. Heel. Sit. Come. No. Sit. Leg. Speak, 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 no, speak, speak, shh, quiet. So you can actually say speak. Yep. And she speaks. What other tricks can dogs do in general? A lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And then so do you see yourself doing this for years to come? Yes, I'm, I'm gonna do it big time. This is just on my personal level, but mm -hmm. like you see the puppies, I'm gonna get more dogs and train them and then maybe give them out. So thank you, Kenneth, for uh, letting me uh, explore you and find out a bit more about dog training. I think it's made me feel maybe a little bit more at ease with dogs and I managed to do some tricks. We caught up with Joseph Cutterly, one of the founders of the Accra Dog Show who explained that dog training is big money in Accra. He also shared his thoughts on dog competitions and changing the perceptions of dog in Ghana. Accra Dog Show, tell me a bit more. 
Yeah, Accra Dog Show started in 2011 at the Elwell Expo Stadium. Um, this is our seventh event, and um, it's been good. You know, it's the first of its kind in West Africa and in Ghana. Um, a show solely for dogs, dog lovers, and their owners. So it's a big program. Are there any dogs in the kind of dog circles that you've seen that's like a star and that could go abroad and yes, yes. compete? Yes, yes. We've bought some very good dogs in recent times. Mm -hmm. You know, Ghana has evolved. And we have a few good dogs in town who have actually gone to professional shows in Europe and ha have won. We have some potentials yeah. that, that, that could grow and yeah. evolve. It all depends on the money. This business is all about money. Um, in America, a bully puppy, you can even get it for up to $100,000. Oh. Yes. And someone could sell his uh, champion dog to you at perhaps a million dollars. I guess if people realize that you could make this much money from a dog, they would treat dogs differently on it the depends. streets? It depends. The, street dogs, the, the, the kind of dogs we have on the street is not the kind of dogs we're talking about here. Okay. Yes. <laughs> because like I'm saying, um, how many people will earn 1,000 Ghana cities in Ghana? Mm. You understand? And you're spending that kind of money on your dog. Maybe grooming your dog, just getting a treat, one or two things. And in fact, there, 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 are, there are dog collars and leashes that could cost as much as five hundred dollars. Oh. Yes, <laughs> you know people want to uh, people want to treat their dogs special, and it's a it's, it's a status symbol. Mm -hmm. Dogs are status symbols. You realize that every American president has his own dog or dogs. Mm -hmm. Most of the celebrities have their own dogs, and so it's a status uh, symbol. You can have a Rottweiler. I can have a Rottweiler, not from the same breeder. Um, not from the same bloodline. You, you may have got yours for maybe 1,500 Ghana cities. I got mine for $2,000. You're not on the same scale. Um, I might have uh, imported my dog from America or from Serbia or from Russia or somewhere else. I would have spent about 1,000 euros just for FA. And you know, 1,000 euros is not small money. You know, you know what I mean? So um, it depends on who is buying and who is ready to pay. I have, I have a very good friend. He was not really into dogs. I had um, a dog available with me. I said, I'm too busy now. Why don't you just take this dog? Man? This is an indoor dog. He said, ah, you expect me to put the, keep this indoors? I said, well, you can. So he tried it and then he fell in love. He got three dogs later. Yes, and he got one for no less than $1,000. Wow. Because he wanted the very best of. So Amazing. yes, I've had over 20 years experience with dogs. Yeah. Over 20 years experience with dogs. Thank you. That was really insightful. I didn't know that much about dog, dog breeding and just the whole industry in general. Yes. So thank you and I wish you all the best for the years to come. And maybe, maybe one day I'll get a dog. I'll give you one. <laughs> I'll get a dog. Is it cute? Very cute dog. I'm going to okay. give you a Maltese or a Bichon Fusé. Really? It won't pee everywhere, um, right? Perhaps an American Eskimo. Whichever one is Ooh, from that, that sounds good. American Eskimo. Yeah. I don't even know what it looks like, but it sounds good. Yeah, very beautiful. It's a ladies kind of dog. Ew. Just for me. Well, thank you. See you same time next week.